what's up? We're here at Combat and Coffee, Poli Malanaji with Poli TV. What's going on? Got the espresso. Take my espresso shot. And we're good to go. Empty espresso cup, ready to go. How's everybody doing today? We got a big, big fight weekend. Big fight weekend. Ryan Garcia, Tank Davis, actually, or should we say Tank Davis versus Ryan Garcia? I don't know which one you want to say first. Either way, it's a big fight that everybody's looking forward to. It's a fight that people have been talking about. It's a fight that people have been curious about. It's a fight that people were wondering if it was going to happen. Sometimes boxing's good to us. That's for sure. Uh, I yeah, mean, I mean, uh, let's uh, let's just start. Let's just start it off. When was uh, your first um, experience with Tank? Like, when was the first time you you saw Tank and this guy's on the map? You know? I saw I saw Tank man, on the Mayweather on the cards, man. I mean, I saw Tank when he was a four round fighter, and I thought I thought he was very very good. Uh, when I first saw him, then there was a uh, there was a moment in like the middle of his uh, uh, come up where I was wondering if he was if he was getting a bit overrated. Like he didn't look as good. there was a fight or two where he didn't look as good to me, and I was kind of questioning it. And then uh, I thought when uh, Floyd made, put him in the Pedraza fight, I'll be honest, I thought Pedraza might have been a, a little bit too much for at that time because I, I hadn't I didn't really see Tank looking as good as I had originally. At that moment in time when he fought Pedraza, I hadn't seen Tank looking as good originally. And if you guys remember, Floyd had had issues with Tank at that time. So I was wondering if he was trying to get him beat. But let's not forget, I also was in the fighter meetings a lot for Pedraza's fights in those days. And I can remember Pedraza specifically constantly hammering on us how much he was struggling to make the weight. And he was only keeping staying at 130 because he had the title. So he was staying. Pedraza wound up staying at 130 pounds a little bit too long uh, for me because the way Tank destroyed him, although it's a credit to Tank, you know, you saw a different Pedraza when he went up to lightweight and even, and even super lightweight. He was a better fighter once again. So, you know, I, I do think that uh, Tank uh, had a good win over Pedraza. And that was where uh, uh, really you started to say, okay, you know what? This kid won his first world title now. Now he's, uh, they, they're, kind of, they're kind of ready to anoint him uh, or at least uh, start to put him in that position, in that situation. And so, and so here we are since then. I mean, you know, he's, he's continued to move up the ladder and here we are. Same question with Ryan. I mean, when was the first time? Ryan was a little gambled? bit less, honestly. I, 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 I didn't see a lot of Ryan. I heard a lot of Ryan growing up. You know, I, I mean, coming up and he, as he was coming up the ladder, I, I heard a lot about Ryan, but I wasn't seeing a lot of, of Ryan. Um, you know, he was, I remember the first time I really, really paid attention to Ryan. I think it was on the Canelo versus Kovalev on the card where it was like, whoa, he, I, he got a first round knockout over a guy that was supposed to be really, really durable. And I was like, I think it was a Filipino guy, if I remember correctly, but, uh, you know, I, I, again, my memory might be a little bit foggy, but I remember he just had this performance where he stopped the guy who he wasn't really supposed to stop, and he stopped him in one round, like, really, really badly. And I thought to myself, well, I mean, this guy's really uh, turning a corner here and, and coming up the ladder. But the fight that basically made me look at him in the way that Tank, I looked at Tank after he beat Pedraza, the fight for Cam, uh, for Garcia was the Campbell fight. You know, the, the Campbell fight was a fight that I really, really thought he was risking because I really thought that Luke Campbell was always better than people gave him credit for. And Luke Campbell showed that in the fight. He, he gave problems to Ryan, he dropped Ryan. But then Ryan, uh, showing a lot of character, uh, came back and stopped him. And I thought that was a, a, a big statement win, not just in beating Luke Campbell, but also in the manner in which he was able to do it, where he had to overcome adversity, up, get up off the canvas, and still maintain the wherewithal in his mind to hold on to a game plan as well as, as stay with the winning mentality and go win that fight against a solid, solid veteran who had uh, challenged for world titles, had won an Olympic gold medal, and it was a, was a very, very good fighter. So there's been moments where I was wondering about these guys as they, as they came up the ladder, wondering if they were the goods or not. And then there was the moment where I, I kind of clicked over and was like, all right, these guys are the goods. And those and, I, and, and now it's where those two fights were for, the, for these guys, you know? Whose uh, resume do you put above the who? other? or who, who Whose resume? resume? Yeah. I think overall – Tank has a better resume overall. Overall, Tank has a better resume. But I think the best fighter that each of them has fought is Luke Campbell. I think Luke Campbell beats every single fight. If Luke Campbell fought Tank Davis' resume, Luke Campbell would have would have would be undefeated as well. But he would just be have less knockouts. So I think uh, I'll basically put it to you like that. And, and and this is the guy that Ryan knocked out. So although the overall resume for me is is stronger for Tank, the best fighter that either of them either of them has fought is with Ryan. And again, I say that because I look at I'll, 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 I will take Luke Campbell over anybody that uh, Joanna Davis has beaten. Okay, so with that, um, if he got sent to the canvas by Luke Campbell, what's going to happen if Tank connects the way Luke Campbell did? Well, if Tank connects like that, I think the fight's over. I mean, let's, let's, let's be honest. But, you know, Tank is also 
it's been shorter than Luke Campbell too. I mean, you know, we're talking, we're talking about a guy in, in, in Javante Davis who's, who's, you know, who's like Beetlejuice's mm-hmm. height, and you're talking about Luke Campbell who <laughs> is a very, very tall lightweight. You know, so, so you got, you got, you got complications in range there. You know, uh, the, the, the range of Campbell uh, posed a lot of problems for 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 Garcia. You know, and, and combined with the southpaw stance, um, I think in this fight that the range battle is gonna, you know, it, it's the problem that Ryan poses for Javante. Javante has to close that gap and he has to figure out his range if he wants to land those big punches on 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 Ryan the way he lands them on other guys and I think he's gonna have a guy in Ryan who also believes he belongs on this stage I don't know if Javante's fought a lot of guys that feel like they belong on this stage like I felt like Santa Cruz Cruz being a blown up bantamweight uh, was kind of there for the payday. He just, and he only, and honestly, Santa Cruz only has one gear. It's just go straight all the time, no change of pace. You're, you're going to eventually walk into a punch when you're yeah. fighting a guy like, like, like David Swiss, changes in speed and changes in pace. Um, the other guys that, uh, I, again, I felt like Pedraza, although it's a good win, uh, was weight drained. And and I, I think the the, the my, my experiences with Pedraza and fighter meetings prior to that, uh, in the fight, in his fights prior to that, and also the way he looked after that, I think kind of shows that. But it's a good win nonetheless. Um, Mario Barrios is a tall guy. I thought he, you know, he's a, he, he's a, he looks the part, Mario Barrios. But at the end of the day, he's a tall guy who has no jab. And if you're a tall guy who has no jab and you don't hit like and you don't hit like Deontay Wilder, who actually who actually who actually does have a jab. But I'm just saying, I'm giving the example of the power. If you're a tall guy with no jab and you don't hit like Deontay Wilder, you're a waste of time. And so Mario Barrios is a waste of a great frame and a great look. Mario Barrios for me was a very promotable guy who had the look. But didn't, but nobody taught him the basics in boxing, and so and I already saw that in the Keith Thurman fight when Barrios fought Thurman. Absolutely no jab. He just paused with the left hand out there. Has no jab. Doesn't know how to use it. Doesn't know how to use it to close range. Doesn't know how to do anything. So so again, the Barrios win becomes a little bit of an overrated win, you know, because I don't I don't really rate Barrios that much, you know. Um, and so at at that point, where do you where, where do you really start going, you know? Um, again, Tank has been a good fighter. Uh, I, I I I still think it's better than. Then uh, the overall resume of Garcia, I'll tell you that. I mean, Garcia has Campbell, but then he's got really undersized guys like Fortuna. Like Fortuna like Fortuna's Argo. really, really undersized. Yeah. And, and, and and Fortuna also, not only was he undersized, but Fortuna was also a guy who didn't really want to be there. You could tell he was yeah. just kind of fighting for the payday, you know? Yeah. Even though I mean, even Emmanuel Tago, you know? Um, guy just showed up, guy just to show up, you know? So so you don't really get that. But but again, the Luke Campbell fight was a battle. It was a battle uh, between uh, for against a guy who wanted to win, against a guy who knew how to win, against a guy who had been in with the best, and against a guy who really knew how to be crafty and maneuver things, you know? And and he, and he was the right size. You know, Campbell's a natural lightweight. He's, a right, he's the right size, he's a big lightweight, you know? And, and that really would pose a lot of problems. I would have really been curious to see uh, Campbell against uh, uh, any of the other guys, you know? Because I think... I think out of even uh, Haney or Tank Davis, I think Campbell uh, is still a better fighter than anybody and than anybody on their resumes. You know, well, and, 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 Tank, and Campbell beats anybody on, on either of their resumes. Let's bring it back Campbell here, here to the Rolly fight. Um, that clip has been coming up a bunch, you know. Rolly actually, Rolly's actually a, 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 a one of the better yeah. opponents. I thought you would. Rolly's one of the better opponents. You know, in those and, first six rounds, what did you see that Rolly was doing right? Until, again, it's range control. Again, it's yeah. range control. Rolly's a little bit awkward, though. Rolly has an awkwardness that Ryan doesn't have, though. But of course, Ryan is a southpaw. So uh, I mean, I'm Ryan is a southpaw. I mean, Ryan has more power. Not even southpaw. Ryan has more. Ryan has more power against uh and against southpaw is that with a, a guy with a big right hand and a guy with a big left hook against a short southpaw could be a problem, you know. So, so I, I think um I think at the end of the day, Rolly showed the complications that range can have on Davis, um. But Davis ultimately set the trap and got him. And I think Roley, I think it's something that Davis was also processing over the course of that fight because Roley was kind of falling in with the right hand, trying to throw the right hand, lead right hands against the south one and 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 that pushing like middle range hook slash jab he was throwing after the right hand. And it was leaving a little bit of daylight in between them. And I think guards and 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 I think Davis saw it, Davis saw it processed and eventually punched in between the punches. If you look at how Rolly got knocked out, he got hit in between the right hand and the hook he was trying to throw, you know? Davis timed and it very well. And he threw the same punch twice on Durante Davis, right? Yeah, Pretty yeah. Well. And he, I mean, he was, it was a punch he was throwing uh, over the course of the fight. It was a combination he was throwing over the course of the fight. I, I think I, th- I, I think Rolly made his own mistake. I wonder if, if Rolly doesn't just hand the, the, the fight on a platter to Davis, if Davis finds a way to get, overcome that range, this, this, that range discrepancy. Because it seems the range was really bothering him. And that's the fight that I'm really looking at and today, in a fight that I've been flip flopping back and forth, today leaves me to believe that Ryan wins the fight. As, as we're going into, as we're going into tomorrow, I've been flip flopping oh, yeah. back and forth for two months. But today, the twenty first of April, 
when I look, I really, because I was really talking about Roly on, on Pro Box TV this week because Roly uh, uh, had to fight coming up as well. And then his fight got canceled because the guy failed the drug test, uh, Puello. So I was looking at, I was analyzing Roly a bit this week and I, and, and, and I had an epiphany. You know, the range, the range discrepancy against Davis really is a problem because Davis is a slow starter. He doesn't have the fastest feet, though he has fast hands. And I'll be honest, man. I mean, Ryan has that range, and Ryan is less reckless than his Roly. You know, yet he has more power than Roly. You know, so so it, it it brings a little bit more complication. And he doesn't have the range that Luke Campbell has in order to present the problems that Luke Campbell presented. He has the power, but in order to present that power as a problem, you've got to figure out the range. And he doesn't have the tools, and in terms of closing range, in terms of disguising range that Luke Campbell had. He doesn't have the height. He doesn't have the, the length uh, in his arms, the the, the reach. And all this other stuff. So he's got to he gotta be a different kind of fighter. Listen, Tank is a, a capable guy. Um, but these complications that I saw, especially in the Roley fight, really lead me to believe today that, I, you know what? Yes, Davis makes a good point. Ryan, a lot of times, has been just a left hook guy. But against, but, but really, what was, what was Roley at the end of the day? He wasn't just a left hook guy. I mean, Roley was just a wild guy, but he was, he was, he was giving you a lot of problems just strictly, strictly on controlling range. And it was, as a matter of fact, it was the moment that Roley fell, it started falling in and giving up his own range that he paid. But if Roley keeps discipline with that range control, does Davis have an answer? We're gonna find out because Ryan's not gonna Ryan's gonna stay more disciplined than Roley did. So we're gonna find out if Davis has an answer against his kind of range. And I tell you what, it's against a lot more firepower. Ryan has a lot more firepower. So you see the fight going the distance? Is, is that what you're saying? No, no, no. I, I I'm gonna go. You know, I think the longer it goes, I think Davis. I think Davis probably does take more control. If the fight goes too long, I can see Davis taking more control and even getting late stoppage. I feel like Davis is gonna. I feel like, I feel like Ryan in five rounds, bro. Really, I feel like Ryan I feel like Ryan rounds. in five. Okay. Yeah, I feel like Ryan in five rounds, bro. Because if, Ryan, if, if it's gonna be Ryan, he's gonna get it. It's gonna be earlier. You know what I mean? I feel like the longer the fight goes, the more, Davis the is a very a better boxer. Davis, Davis, well, Davis just has a very. Uh, cerebral mind, you know, and, and and I feel he starts to put things together. And I feel like Ryan has to go too many rounds in this fight. It means he hasn't figured a lot of it out. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like Ryan, hmm. if he figures it out, he's just going to land the big shots the fight's going to end, you know? But I think if, if, if he's not doing that, he's not doing that, it, it, it's going to start to mean that he's having trouble holding Davis at bay, or he's having trouble keeping Ray, Davis in closing range. And Davis closing range on you is a big problem because he's got the fire. He's got more firepower than Campbell. So he, he starts putting himself in position to land the punches that Campbell landed. This fight's not going, this fight's going to end when, he's, when he lands that kind of thing. If, it, if that's Davis, we all, I think we'll all agree. If Davis's left hand landed like Campbell's left hand, the fight's over. I mean, the fight's over and, he, and Ryan's probably not waking up till tomorrow morning, you know? So, so, <laughs> but again, landing that shot for Davis is more complicated because there is a vastly bigger complication and range in between the two fighters. Okay, cool. Um, so, that all goes through. Garcia wins in the fifth. What what happens next? Um, rematch, I guess. You know, rematch. Rematch. I mean, I I think these guys are gonna fight at least a couple of times. Honestly, uh, it's the nature of the business. I think these guys are gonna fight at least a couple of times. Um, and I think uh, I think that's how it's gonna go. I think this fight's gonna be a fun year for this division. I'll tell you because because I'm picking Ryan in this fight. I'm picking Lomachenko to beat uh, Haney. So that means later in the year we're going to get a rematch of Ryan and, and Ryan and uh, uh, and Tank and we're, and we're and then we're going to get Lomachenko and Stevenson at the end of the year. You know, so I think this this year is shaping up to be really fun in the lightweight division. Now, if we can get those in between fights that will be really really fun that nobody makes, like for example, Cambosos and like Pitbull Cruz, like stuff like that. Like if we get those in between fights that would also make the lightweight division fun, I think we'll be really we'll be we'll be really smoking. You know, we'll be really. And you get guys like Joe Adorno and Jermaine Ortiz into the mix as well. Well, the rematch couldn't happen. The rematch couldn't happen so quick. How how long does Javante have to do? Like nine, huh? nine. How many months does Javante have to do in May? Well, we don't know if he's gonna do. You know, we Javante has high power lawyers. Come on, bro. You know, OJ Simpson got away with murder. Let's uh, let's let's be honest. No, but you know, he, when, you, like, when he, you got that kind actually, of money. No, but he's actually going. Like he got sentenced and everything. Like he, he got sentenced. No, yeah. they said it was. Uh, what, what? What was it? They said it was. Uh, what? What did he plead out? Didn't he plead out to something? He, no, he pleaded like, guilty. Uh, he has to do like yes, nine months. It was like, but it was like a, uh, not no content. What was it? It was um, it was what, what's the what's the term? Didn't they give him a term? It, it, suspended sentence. Some it was it's something like that. Suspended sentence, but he has to start. That was a while ago. So that suspended <laughs> sentence kicks in. in May. Yeah, but it's about, what's the sentence? Though? We don't know. You know what I mean? Like. I don't know. I, I, 
I feel like free. I'm, 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 I'm just, I'm just curious tank. to how we got to start a hashtag there. free tank. We need, we need this rematch. Hashtag free tank. All right. Um, I'm picking the guy. I'm picking the guy to lose the fight. I don't want the guy to go to jail though. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I like the guy. <laughs> I want to see him fight. Yeah, I, I, I want to see him fight too. So what? Um, I ask you this all the time. And although, I'm, although I'm not, I'm, although for any all you sensitive ones out there, I'm not condoning hit and runs. Okay, I'm just, I'm just, yeah. just for all the sensitive ones out there. Just want to see him fight. That, right? yeah. How would you approach Tank like in a fight? Like, how do you poly? Like, this is. Well, I think. I, I think. I think the approach is is uh, control the range. I think Tank has shown if there's a deficiency, if one of Tank's deficiencies is is he has feet that are slow, hands mm-hmm. that are fast, but feet that are slow, and um, he has trouble with guys who understand range and control range. You know, you don't necessarily have to have big power range. in order to uh, get him to respect your range. Because even even the guy he just fought, I mean, uh, I forget Hunter his name. Luis Garcia. Yeah, you know that guy was yeah. tall, and he, and he, you know Tank again had a slow start against him as well. You know, so so I think um. A mastery of range uh, um, is is a is a thing that complicates Tank's life. I, I think it is. He's got that he's got that equalizer where if he gets you, you're gone. So you can't really you, you'd have to have a really disciplined fight. But one advantage Ryan has is not only is he tall enough to control range, but he also has the equalizer. So he also so he's not just a tall guy who can complicate your life. He also has has the kind of firepower to end the fight as well. So very very interesting stuff. How would you poly at let's say one one forty fight Ryan? Like in, in your prime, I think Ryan's a tougher fight stylistically would have been for, for me than, than Davis. I think David Davis, I never lost to a southpaw. Um, and, and I was very, very one thing I was good at is very controlling range, especially against slow footed fighters. But of course, I'm not saying either fight would have been easy, but I think Ryan, Ryan would have been a very, very tough fight, man. I mean, rather Ryan would have been taller than me, uh, with fast hands as well and, and firepower. Let's remember what I what I ended up facing when I fought him your con, you know. So, uh, with that, with that kind of speed, I was thinking the same thing, yeah, yeah, so. So I think Ryan. I think for me, stylistically, Ryan would have complicated my life more than Javante would have. Um, I tell you what, though, if I would have fought Javante at 140, I would have at least used my jab, unlike Mario Barrios. You know, it was a waste. It was a waste of such a good height. Do you have any? Do you have any questions? Like just in general for the fans, or and just anything that's been no, on your mind? Well, maybe, We've what, been talking about this fight forever. Everybody? What's everybody's thoughts? I mean, you know, once in a while, boxing gives us these little gift wraps, uh, gift wrapped uh, treats. You know, where they, we talk about a fighter, we actually get it. You know, so so uh, I mean, uh, what's everybody's thought? How, what's everybody's mindset going into the week? Because you know, like you know, it's one thing. Of the cool thing about being a boxing fan is when you get these kind of fights. That fight week, like that morning of that big fight, is a really like buzzy feeling. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like only boxing fans can really describe that. Like I always tell people, like you can't really understand. Like people like well, we didn't live in the Mike Tyson era. Like all oh, the people like oh they feel they feel like Mike Tyson's overrated and they feel like I, I get a, I hear a lot of that. But I'm like you can't really understand Mike Tyson unless you lived in an era where you knew what it was like to wake up the morning of a Mike Tyson fight. It was just it was just goosebumps all day long. You know what I mean? Like it was like it was just butterflies in your stomach all day long. Like it was like it was the best feeling in the world. So I think all boxing fans have that. And some guys give us that more than others. Tyson was just used to give it to us more than anything and more than anything in my life that I can ever remember. And I feel like even adults feel that way because there's so, still some people that think Tyson's like the best guy ever, you know? Yeah. Best fighter ever. So I and I think it's for the reason that you know these butterflies make you go in a little bit of denial at times. Because even all of me Tyson's not the best ever, but Tyson certainly was a guy who gave us very special feelings for those of us that lived in the moment where we knew what it was like to wake up the morning of a Tyson fight, especially the morning of a Tyson Tyson fight in the late 80s, bro. Like, morning of a Tyson fight from like 88 to 90 was unbelievable. Uh, 87, 88 to 90 was unbelievable. That Saturday? Yeah, like that Saturday was unbelievable. And I, I don't even think they were all on Saturdays. I think it was the fight in Tokyo with Tony Tubbs. I think it was in the middle of the week. Back then, boxing was different. But nonetheless, um, we get this feeling for us boxing fans, you know, this street where, again, we're going to, we are in that buzz week. We are in that, that high, high profile, uh, high adrenaline week. And tomorrow morning, we're all going to wake up with that same feeling. We're going to wake up with that yeah. feeling like, Man, what a, f-. you know, only boxing fans can really, really understand this kind of thing. You know, it's like, yeah, I, I try to explain it to my casual fans and, and they don't, they don't get it. It's a different kind of feeling, you know? And I, and I feel like, I feel like that, that, that's what makes me more excited too. You know, everybody's texting each other. Everybody's talking about it. Everybody can't wait for it. You know? So, so, uh, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm on that side of it now, you know, I no longer fight. So I'm on that side of it and, and it's, and it's pretty cool. And, uh, Looking at this for some reason, I, like we've talked about this in the past, Ryan's not the typical Mexican fighter. I know he's Ryan Garcia, but like, like he doesn't have that style. 
Uh, no, no, Ryan's not a typical Mexican fighter. Ryan is also not typical Mexican American culture either. Like he doesn't have like that accent. He's from Victorville, I, but like, I, like, like yeah, I think like exactly. when I think of like I think of like you know like like when I think of West Coast American Mexican Americans, it's a it's a very particular culture like like old school like Italian Americans on the East Coast where like you, you could if I could picture you point to Central you know for the typical. Jojo. Yeah, uh, yeah, like, like, for example, like Brando Vargas. You, you think of like mm -hmm. a, a West Coast Mexican American, you know, you think of like a, a Brando Vargas type of culture, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, like, you know, and, and you think of like uh, an East Coast type of Italian American, you know, you had like, you know, you had like an Arturo Gotti, you know, what I mean, that's what you, mm -hmm. you would think of that. So, so I think like, I think Ryan kind of is like a hybridish in a way where he is Mexican American, but he's got a little bit of a hybrid in him. And in terms of uh, the way he talks, it's not of the accent. You know what I'm saying? Like, like mm -hmm. Fernando talks like a West coast Mexican American. You know what I mean? Like yeah. <laughs> I talk like an East coast Italian New Yorker. You know what I mean? Like I, Ryan is a Mexican American from the West coast, but he doesn't talk like a Mexican American from the West coast. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like that that's one of those accents. It's sort of like my accent where it's kind of like dying out, you know? And so Ryan almost becomes like this hybrid sensation. But you know it's worked for him. It's it's worked for him. It's it's attracted uh different kind of fans. Um, I don't know that he's like the whole Mexican icon thing. I think I think the Mexican fans appreciate the fact that he's Mexican American, but I think the fact that he doesn't speak Spanish and and and, and he, again he doesn't have really ha live in the way of that culture, um, doesn't make him a, a Mexican darling like say a, a Vargas at the La Jolla or a Raul Marquez. I remember back in the day, uh, you know these Italian Amer these Mexican American fighters that. Uh, really were uh, um, you know were, were loved by the by the Mexican American culture. I think Ryan is liked by the Mexican American culture, but I don't think he's they're endeared to him the same way. But at the same time, I think he's got a lot more crossover fans too because he's he's kind of created this uh, a different kind he's of niche got like for himself. Ten million Instagram followers. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's yeah. created a different niche for himself, and it's a different thing. And like I said, I mean, if I heard Ryan Garcia talk to me on the phone, I wouldn't assume he's, Me he's Mexican American. You know what I mean? Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't assume that. And, and you not. don't see that in his fighting West style. Coast, West Coast, uh, you don't see uh, that in his West, fighting style too. Yeah, you don't see that in his fighting style. But I wouldn't assume also that he's a, a an, an American-born Mexican. Like American-born Italians have had my accent back in the day, but the new Italian Americans don't have my accent anymore. You know, um, the Mexican Americans from the back in the day from the West Coast had that Fernando Vargas accent. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. but the new ones really might not. You know, so so you know. Um, it's sort of a changing, uh, but 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 it's worked for him. It's worked for him, and, yeah. and he's very very popular. I think, I think he brings a, a a lot of potential to the sport. I really do think he does. if he can live up to the hype, I think he brings a lot of potential to the sport because he's a clean face. He's he's marketable. Um, he's uh, a good looking guy. He doesn't get in trouble. He's a good example. Um, and and, he, and so on and so forth. I really I really think he bring he brings a lot of it. Uh, Tank, you know, has to clean himself. I don't think Tank's a bad guy. I've, I've been around Tank. I met, I met, I've met Tank. You know, I, I don't think necessarily Tank's a bad guy, but certainly Tank makes certain decisions in life that are questionable. And I, and I don't know what kind of example that is for people. And I don't know if that hurts your marketability at, at the end of the day as well, you know? So I'm, um, I'm taking Tank by the way, like through decision. I'm taking Tank, decision? tank by decision? decision. Yeah, I think it's going to go the, I think it's going to be one of those. Yeah. I, I dude, weirdly if, think it's going to go the distance. Dis if this fight goes a distance, I would hate to think the controversy, bro, because you know how much politics is laced in this yeah. fight right now, bro. It's going to be so ridiculous. I have a feeling this is going to – I have such I, a weird I feeling it's going to go the distance. I hope it does the judges because, man, the judges in boxing suck, man. And, and this fight is going to – is laced with so much politics. God, can you imagine if it goes a distance? Jeez. Yeah, I, I just finished I, I just finished The Wire, and I forgot mm -hmm. that, um, that your guy's on it, uh, Whitlock. Oh Isaiah yeah, Whitlock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, God, I was God watching. I was like, yeah. I was like, yeah. how do I know this guy? And then he's just been the key. Yeah, the entire time. He's, he's in twenty. He says it in twenty fifth hour. That's his line. He says it in twenty fifth hour too. She. Yeah. Yeah. You know what else he says that people don't realize? He's the doctor Goodfellas. in Goodfellas. Yeah, he's the doctor in Goodfellas. Yeah. yeah. Goodfellas. yeah. And you know what else he is? And you know what else he is? Doc in the tight in the punch out commercial with me. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. So I have. Uh, I just finished the wire. All Baltimore and um I don't know that's got me feeling tank. Um yeah, right. by decision and you got Ryan in the fifth. I got Ryan in the fifth, yeah. And you were I, right I, I, about uh the uh Fortuna fight. You predict you correctly predicted six Ryan round knockout. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I just think that if Ryan's gonna do it, it's it's gonna it's gonna be a, a earlier part of the fight. And I and Ryan does have that early firepower anyway. So because I think the later it starts to go. The more it probably slips away to the point where probably it starts to become advantageous to Davis, and Davis probably wins the fight. So if I, the fact that if you're a guy who's gonna pick Ryan, you're gonna you're gonna pick him early. I think you know, and that's what I think happens. She, she, she. Well, 
yeah. well uh i'm gonna i'm gonna take ryan i'm gonna take i'm i'm not gonna i'm taking tank by decision i don't even know what that that's probably like plus 800 i know uh yeah. tanks at minus 195 right now so ryan's the underdog yeah i mean uh, yeah there's probably been, that's a, kind of there's been some ryan money coming in there because tank was minus 250 so if tanks at minus 195 that means there's been some late ryan money coming in and interesting does the rehydration clause what you're take on on that does that matter you know, that's interesting mm. you know it's funny because i was thinking that but i spoke to oscar earlier this week at pro box tv um on our talk show pro box tv mm-hmm. and oscar said that ryan makes he lives a disciplined life and ryan's actually going to stay at lightweight for a while after this fight so you know that makes me think you know the re- whole rehydration clause thing is you know because you're you're dying to get out of the weight class but you're you still need to stay mm-hmm. there you know but but in this regard um you know he it might not affect him as much as everybody's thinking because if he's the guy who plans to stay at lightweight, that means he, you know, it means he makes it pretty. You know, I would nobody makes his weight easy, but that's the thing he makes it rather, rather, rather well. You know, I've seen him in real life. He's not as big as I don't know. He, he, he was smaller than me. Yeah, I'm he's feet. very, very, very skinny frame, sort of like Luke Campbell actually. Luke Campbell, I mean, Luke Campbell won the Olympic gold at, at bantamweight. I think you know he was very tall at the weight, and he just filled in. But um, yeah, he's he's a he's a, he's a skinny guy. <laughs> <laughs>